Welcome to Mary's Library for Book Spot. I'm Jane Miller, and today we continue with part two of our stories from hymns. We want to thank Brandon Glick, our music director, who will furnish music, and Tom Winter, who is our program director. We begin with a grand hymn. We always sing it on Trinity Sunday, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It was written 1826 by Reginald Herbert, and he was a vicar in his family parish where he wrote 57 hymns. And he dreamed of publishing them in a book, in a collection related to the church year. They would have been very helpful to any church. But when he asked the bishop, the bishop said no. When he was 40 years old, he was sent to India to carry the Lord's word there. And four years later, he died. However, it was after he died that his wife found in a trunk all the 57 hymns, and she had them published. And that is how we found this wonderful hymn based on Revelations 4, verses 8 through 11, Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs> Next hymn is a favorite of old and young. It comes from a poem written in 1860 by two sisters, Susan and Anne Werner. They lived in New York State on the Hudson River, kind of southeast New York State, and for 40 years they conducted Bible classes for cadets at West Point. And both women were buried there with full military honors. They are the only civilians buried in the military cemetery at West Point. And to this day, their home on Constitution Island is maintained by West Point as a museum to their memories. And what is this hymn that these two Bible teachers wrote? Jesus loves me, this I know, cause the Bible tells me so. How Great Thou Art is our next hymn. It was completely unknown until discovered in 1949 from a Russian translation of a Swedish poem of 1885 set to the music of a Swedish folk melody. When Billy Graham came upon the English translation, he used the hymn in his 1955 crusade in Toronto, and then in his 1957 crusade in New York City, and it was sung 99 times by George Shea, with the chorus joining in the majestic refrain, Then Sings My Soul. And Then Sings My Soul is the title 
on our book from which we get all of these stories. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. I close now with the hymn, The Church is One Foundation. It was written in 1853 when a huge conflict shook the Anglican Church of England to its foundation. This conflict out of South Africa reverberated all over the world. So three years later in 1867, Anglican bishops from around the world assembled for a theological conference at Lambeth, England, just outside of London. The tone of the proceedings was set by this hymn with words written by Samuel Stone. He was curate at Windsor in the shadow of Windsor Castle. And then Stone's words were set to music by Samuel Wesley, the grandson of Charles Wesley. The hymn became the processional for the Lambeth Council and is still used in church programs around the world. The church is one foundation.